Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I will examine turning the Atlas rocket into an SSTO. This is just the uh, one and a half stage Atlas rocket that we are going to eliminate the half part of. Uh, this was suggested in the comments to the Falcon Atlas Centaur video. So we are going to just open up the standard FASA RO Atlas Mercury rocket here. So this is a craft file that comes with Realism Overhaul uh, that you can use if you have the FASA mod installed. And as you can see here, it's got a lot of part modules that we don't have because I don't have uh, certain mods installed in this. But that's because when they saved the craft file, they did have those mods involved. Now, in the one and a half stage configuration, it's a little bit hard to tell exactly what's going on with the Atlas rocket because the Delta V doesn't seem like it has enough to get to orbit even though it does. But anyway, we are going to remove, this is the half part of it, this is the booster engines. These are the booster engines that it uh, drops off. And then all we have is the is the core engine, the LR-105, which of course uh, can't get to orbit on its own. Well, it can't get off the ground on its own. Actually, it could get to orbit all, all on its own if it had the thrust to weight ratio, but it doesn't. Look at that 9,830, and here you see why it can be turned into an SSTO. Now, of course, if we had a lighter payload, it'd be much easier to do this, but I will insist that we want to launch the Mercury capsule to orbit. So now we have to, now, th this is a little bit complicated here. You can see the tank butt here that goes along with this engine. Uh, so we've got to reform that, so let me do that first. But we need to find an engine that's light enough to take the place and still provide all that thrust. And that is the catch. So, but first let's replace the tank butt. So I'm actually gonna go through all the steps. We want this procedural tank balloon. Um, actually there's just... The procedural parts has gotten all complicated on me. Um, I think I have an older version of procedural parts. This isn't the one with the integrated structure. It is a different install than I used for the tutorial series. So yeah, we're gonna go with this balloon tank one. Anyway, uh, smooth cone and 3.05 meters is the diameter of that tank. And that's because that's 10 feet. And we want to match the volume of this. This is 11,000 kerosene. So we're going to just Put kerosene in and initially we'll keep the tanks exactly the same so we're pretty close right now we just need to be a little bit longer maybe um, that's that's close I feel like the bottom end of this is a little bit wide but we'll keep it that way and uh, we'll just increase the length uh, that's too much okay that's close enough 10,999 we'll go with that Okay, and we'll paint it Atlas Texture. Okay, so we have that. And the Delta V you see here right now is with the verniers. We haven't taken off the verniers and we're not going to. So, maybe I should have kept that out, but as far as engine selection is concerned, if we're gonna keep this uh, kerosene and oxygen, uh, we need to find a kerosene oxygen engine. Uh, hydrogen and oxygen doesn't work very well because hydrogen just needs a whole lot more space and so we're not going to have enough, enough tankage volume for a hydrogen engine. Methane and oxygen might work, but the only ones that could lift this off the ground will be sort of heavier. So, you know, they're in a higher class. We're talking about 2,000 kilonewtons and above the BE-4s, the Raptors and such. Uh, as far as a 1,000... 500 sort of kilonewton class engine. It's tough to say, but we do have some 1,500 kilonewton class kerosene engines, and those are mostly um, Soviet engines. Now, the RD191 is too powerful, it's 2,000, and we can see if we actually, I don't like this model because it's got the nodes in the wrong place. This one, you can see it's 2.29 tons, which is really heavy. Uh, how heavy is it? Well, it's it's heavier than the tank. <laughs> it's, the tank is 1.5 tons, and if you add this in, it's a little bit more than that. But still, the the tank is so light that it's lighter than the engine. 
but it gives 1.69 thrust weight ratio, but only 8,000 meters per second of delta V. So I doubt that'll be enough. Plus the thrust weight ratio at the end is gonna be tough though. This does throttle somewhat. So we need something lighter than that, definitely. The Until the Falcon engines, the lightest engine that we could uh, potentially use was the NK engine, uh, uh, NK-15V and the NK-15. Those had, or 33 and 43 if you want the upgraded versions, those had the best thrust weight ratio of any engine. So here we see 1.5 tons for the NK-15 and the NK-15V 1.6. So not that bad considering it's got the bigger nozzle. Now the trick is the NK-15V doesn't have that bad a sea level ISP and has a much better vacuum ISP and you get to the vacuum ISP pretty quickly. It also has more thrust overall uh, when it gets there. Um, so when we decide on which engine to use, you might think NK-15 because it's the sea level one, but ultimately if we take a look at the, and we'll just go straight to the NK-33, we don't, or maybe we'll go with the AJ-2062. Uh, yeah, I guess we can. Uh, let's see, NK-33. Oh, yeah, because of the difference in fuel mixture that they used over time, it looks like the NK-33 gets worse performance here because they changed the uh, ratio of kerosene and oxygen. And then it's even worse with the AJ2662, uh, uh, even though the engine mass goes down. You can see uh, this is heavier than this one. And this one uh, has marginally worse specific impulse than this one. So it's just a matter of, because we've kept the fuel mixture of Atlas the same, uh, this one is closer to that fuel mixture, so it gets 8,400. Let's see what happens when we put the vacuum version. Nope, that didn't actually go on there. 8,793, now we're, uh, sorry, 39, and now we're talking, but it barely gets off the ground, of course, because it is the vacuum engine. And if we switch to the NK43, that's much worse because they changed the, the fuel mixture. Uh, it doesn't have better ISP as NK43, and it's also heavier, so maybe we'll just keep it NK15V. The main benefit to the NK43 is it would be more reliable, and that's important, but, you know, we're trying to maximize things. So uh, this is, you know, the best possibility here. We are going to do a bunch of launches, so let's let's just put these aside and see what other possibilities. There is the Falcon engines. We probably need two of them though. We could contemplate, hyper we could change the tank arrangement. We'll do that next. We won't do that right away. So Merlin 1D, vacuum won't have enough surface ISP. So we have to just go for the, the straight up Merlin 1Ds and we probably need two of them. Definitely, maybe three. But they're pretty light. Three of uh, three Merlin 1Ds is still lighter than an NK15. 9,500 right now, so that's promising. But again, it's not enough thrust. It's just like the same situation as the LR105. So this skirt is 1.61 tons, so we don't want to do that. What I will do is get some, uh, let's uh, create a structural part. All right, we'll leave it there. Now we had done this before, but uh, with the two Merlin 1D uh, sea level and then one Merlin 1D vacuum at the center. But we'll this time examine which arrangement is best. So this time we have three. Wow, that's actually too much thrust weight ratio. Maybe we just need two. Yeah. Oh, uh, yep, yep, that's fine. Uh, because we upgraded the engines to the 1D++ with 900 kilonewtons, that's already more than we need, and that's 9,178 with this fuel mixture, right? We haven't touched the fuel mixture yet. Um, the NK engines might do pretty well if we replace the fuel mixture. I'm going to tuck these in. It's just a structural part after all. So, SSTO. Well, this is the best possibility. We'll see how much extra it has, if it has extra, once we get up there. And then we'll, based on that, 
decide whether the NK engines are feasible or not, right? If this is the one option with the best delta V, then if it doesn't get to orbit, then the other ones won't either, or are, are unlikely to, unless we change the tank uh, configuration, if we change the mixture in it. Okay, but we're just going with the original mixture that the tank had. Okay, we've got Jeb with a somewhat misplaced camera. The electric charge is recharging. Let's just let that finish. I don't know why it had less electric charge in the first place. Okay, so with this configured as it is, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. We technically don't need the verniers, but we kept them. And launch. We have a pretty healthy thrust to weight ratio, so we can turn somewhat quickly. And we know that thrust to weight ratio is just going to go up all the way. So we just have to make sure that we don't overheat the darn thing. These do throttle. Actually, having a throttling engine is probably a requirement for this. I would say even if you don't have crew on board, it's really hard to make a nice orbit if you can't throttle down and you have like a uh, thrust weight ratio of 20 at the end. It's also tough because we have to get to space, but the stage time is fairly low. You can see the time to wap waps this, but we sort of have to get there. So throttling helps. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of opportunity to ditch the launch escape system before we get to orbit, to be honest. We're keeping the pitch up at this point because we have to get to space. <laughs> We'll probably have to pitch down close to the end. Perhaps a steeper trajectory initially might be better, I don't know. I throttle down as much as I can, but it's still gonna go well past 4 G's. And the final part of the burn. Oh, creeping up to 10 G's. <laughs> this is pretty bad. Jeb is reaching his G limit, which is higher than most people. Ah, oh, we're a little bit short because of the weird trajectory, and Jeb lost consciousness. Um, well, he regained consciousness. Uh, okay, so it looks like it's down to a fuel imbalance. A slight fuel imbalance. Okay, well, you know, you could carry less T-Tab, but... Um, yeah, or we could jettison the launch escape system ahead of time. Or at some, maybe when right when we throttle down, it'd be safe. That's probably the only time we could jettison it with it being somewhat safe. Okay, well, let's uh, try it again, keeping in mind this result. Uh, we can probably underfuel the kerosene without changing the tanks. We could underfuel the kerosene by 1,500. Um, but we'll have to tell the the launch clamps not to refuel it. You know what? I might try and save Jeb some some of the G-forces. We could tilt them so that I can shut one engine down. I'm gonna change the bomb part of this tank outright. And so we'll just say take 1,500 out of that. So 9,500. Oops. That'll simplify things. And if we take a look at this, that may be good enough. One other thing we could do is we could just put one at the center and put another one offset. There's no rule against that, technically. It'd be like uh, one of those singleton boosters on Atlas V. We can see that it says we have 9,900 meters per second now that we dumped the extra kerosene, so that's good. Okay, I'm not going to wait for the electric charge, because probably the liquid... Well, it's being topped off now, so the liquid oxygen isn't boiling off. Alright, but we can go. Ignition. And launch. Do 
So, some inefficiency having them splayed out like this. But possibly not too much since we get that 9,900 it claims. We're going to aim just a little bit steeper initially. I'm gonna throttle down. Uh, we'll wait. We're still under 4 Gs. Okay, throttle down now. Let's go halfway. Okay, throttle down further. I don't believe that Delta V reading right now. I don't know what it's trying to say. For sure. Okay, I'm gonna turn off one Merlin 1D and see if it can hold it. Okay, so it's holding it with one Merlin 1D. We've got a little bit of a yaw going on, but... Uh, at this point, this will be when to jettison the escape tower. Not looking too bad. We are in space. Stage time full throttle is 45 seconds. We're obviously not at full throttle, so maybe we can just uh, keep this pitch and go right to apoapsis. That would be nice if we don't have to pitch down. Nope, we do have to pitch down, so I will. And we're creeping up to 6 G's. Even with the one engine throttle down. And shut down. 302 by 170. And we have 600 meters per second left, so very doable. Very doable. And... Uh, just adjusting the kerosene a little bit helped, getting rid of the launch escape system. And even though we tilted these, really when you actually take the angle and see how much you've lost, you haven't lost that much with uh, such a slight angle, so, so it's okay. Yeah, with 600 meters per second, it seems like another engine might be able to do it as well. But uh, the throttling, the throttling is the problem. A uh, few engines are gonna throttle as well as these, and we can't turn off like the only NK engine that we have on it if we only have one. Could we have a cluster of NK nines? That's an interesting thought. I don't know how heavy they are. Well, let's take a look. So the NK nines are smaller than the NK fifteens, but they're not as efficient in terms of thrust to weight ratio. You can see. They're 0.64 tons. Well, that's 9V. I guess if we take just the 9s, uh, we could get four of them on, and it'll be fairly low mass at 0.36 tons. Uh, we would have 1.44 tons, so that's a pretty good thrust to weight ratio. Um, yeah, that might be doable. They don't get as good efficiency as the Merlins, but we did end up with some spare thrust to weight ratio at the end. So let's take a look at the NK9s. The NK9Vs, the sea level ISP is just too low, I think. And they're too heavy with the longer nozzle. So again, the reason why I'm not opting for the NK15s is the thrust weight ratio is just completely uncontrollable. Uh, and we, all, we can only put fit one on there. They don't. They also don't throttle down that much. It's only fifty percent minimum throttle. So, if let's just uh, give a little taste of that. So, when we see this, it peaks out at thirteen, and the best we can do is throttle down so that's at eleven. And I don't even believe this. Uh, sorry, twenty-three. I feel like it's gonna be more than that. Anyway. So, let's see, a pair of NK9s, like that, and then another pair on the center if we could. Okay, and we can action group the pairs. Now these don't throttle, so maybe we should aim to get these outer ones so that we end up with just one through the center of mass. And really get to uh, down to one because we we get to twenty three point eight thrust weight ratio again, and that delta V ain't great. I think well we'll try it like this. I don't know if 
filling this up with more kerosene helps. We took it took it out before. Um, let's see. Oh well, decreasing the kerosene definitely helps in this case. Wow, look at that, ten thousand. Well, let's just underfuel the kerosene in this. Honestly, let's not waste any time. All right. Yeah, so this will be optimal for these engines, and I think for the thrust weight ratio, this is the best arrangement, rather than having the NK-15s and all. And we will actually aim to shut off all but one of these engines. So, that'll toggle that pair. And then, number two, I don't want, well, we'll just do that pair manually. We'll do one at a time manually there. SSTO... NK version. And again, in any case, we're still launching the Mercury capsule to orbit. We're not skimping on the payload. All right. Ignition. And launch. I think our trajectory last time was preferable to the first try, so we'll aim for the same sort of deal. Now, if it's occurred to you to try and turn the Atlas into a space plane, <laughs> because it's occurred to me, of course, uh, there, there there are problems. The, the tank just doesn't take the heat, right? It doesn't have, like, heat tiles on it or anything. And, you know, so it's not recoverable. It's not a recoverable SSTO. That's a whole other topic recoverable SSTOs. This is not gonna do that for us. Once again, we've kept the verniers even though those are pretty useless. I mean, well, until we get down to the one engine, they will be useful when we get there. Okay, we're cutting off the two center engines here. And actually, this would be a good time to get rid of the launch escape system. So, I mean, it's looking pretty good that uh, both the Merlins or the NK-9s would be able to single-stage to orbit the Mercury capsule. But the question is, would that be really cheaper than using the original engines? The original engines weren't very sophisticated, right? They, well, of course, they were expensive because they were the, you know, early on engines. But if they had been, well, they were developed further, uh, but if they were developed in order to be cheaper, they're not as complicated as these engines, potentially. So... And the lower performance and everything. So maybe they would be cheaper. All things being equal, like if they were manufactured in the Soviet Union, for instance. Okay, well I'm gonna try and shut off one of these. Uh, okay, well, I had a bit of a yaw. We didn't quite point it exactly right, but it's holding itself. And since you can't bring the stage back, the value in having an SSTO versus a one and a half stage system is minimal. So, it's just a curiosity that Atlas could have been an SSTO, but it's not a very functional SSTO in terms of doing what we really want an SSTO to do, which is either be cheaper than the other option, or otherwise um, come back, be reusable. Uh, G-force is high. Oh, we went a little bit high. And we didn't actually get a proper periapsis. I didn't. I should have tilted down a little bit more. Okay, but we ended up with uh, even more Delta V. And that's because these are more efficient than the Merlins. And we made sure that the fuel mixture was right for them by underfueling this kerosene tank by 5,000 liters, well, almost 5,000 liters. So, yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, there you have it. Atlas as an SSTO. Those are probably the two best options retaining the kerosene and oxygen fuel mixture, trying not to get Jeb to pass out. So, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.